Alright guys, hello and welcome to another review, vlog, kind of rant situation. Um, what I am talking about on this one, I'm straightening that up for you, is, is the Lumix G85 Micro Four Thirds camera still worth it in 2021? Do you want to know the short answer to that question? Of course you do. Do you want me to explain it to you after I do that or before I do that? Is I'm going to tell you now if it is worth it or not, and then I'll explain it. So, is the Lumix G85 worth it in 2021? The answer is, drum roll please. Yes, the Lumix G85 is 100% still worth it in 2021. This camera is an absolute bloody powerhouse. This one, this one, This one. One, two, three. I would not have bought three Lumix G85s if I thought they were crap. So the reasons behind that, I'll also put in this video, um, I was gonna say in this photo, but it's gonna be a funny looking photo if I'm moving and walking around and talking. In this video, I'll also put other videos and photos of what I've taken on these cameras, um, since I've had them, I've had them for probably over a year and a half now. Um, I've shot everything f um, from band stuff, landscape, uh, models, a um, bit of commercial stuff, client work, all that kind of thing. A massive range of stuff. I've shot on the uh, Olympus 12 to 40 f 2.8, the Olympus uh, 40 to 150 2.8, the kit lens of the the Lumix 12 to 40, I think it is, um, f3.5 to 5.5, the Lumix 25mm 1.7, I think it is, um, the, and then, and then my ultimate favourite lenses out of all of those, which I haven't mentioned before, but the three that I absolutely love and have not taken off the cameras, and they were on the cameras that I just showed you then, are the Sigma 16mm f1.4, the... Sigma 30mm f1.4 and the Sigma 56 f1.4 or in other words the Sigma Holy Trinity. It is probably going on one of the best compact micro four thirds cameras out there besides the only camera I think that might give it a run for its money just purely from a low light perspective is the um, Sony A6400 and some of those in the A6000 range of them. Um, but in saying that, you do sacrifice going into Sony for that benefit of low light is you lose your IBIS. In This is what I find makes these cameras so freaking amazing is they've got image body, in build body, stable, whatever freaking IBIS. They've got IBIS in them, image body, image body, in body image stabilization. In body image stabilization. <laughs> Took me a minute there. I'm just like, my head's exploded because the other reason I am doing this review today is, or review, whatever you want to call it, is because I have made the transition into full frame cameras. I have gone and bought a second hand Sony A7S Mark II. And as much as I love this camera and as great as, as it's been and as great as it's going to be going into the future, finally reaching into that micro four thirds. Um, so finally reaching into that full frame world, um, I, I miss the the JD fives. I, I really do miss them because they're not really bad in low light. They are really not that bad, especially for photography. Yes, they're sixteen megapixels. The A seven S Mark II here is twelve megapixels, so I do drop a bit of quality here. But Lumix ones, I'm running at thirty two hundred, sixty four hundred, in some cases eight hundred. ISO and they have had, you know, they get a little bit of noise in them and that's that's fair enough. But when I'm doing band stuff, I've never really had to shoot a band where they've wanted it to be like 100% super crisp. There was one band, a tribute band that I shot and they said, I want the clearest, cleanest, best footage. And I shot some of their footage on a GoPro Hero 4, which is now like 10 years old. And they loved the video as well, which I had those up on like these little trust systems. Um, but I did them in black and white, and had some effects, so they made them look like CCTV cameras and that. So that was fine for an, 
effects point of view because they were definitely not the sharpest image you've ever seen. And now I've gone into the DJI Osmos for replacing those ones and the DJI Osmo Actions and they are fantastic as well. I really hope and wish that DJ, uh, DJI Osmo um, would bring out the Osmo Action 2. I know there's talk about everything, but I'm keen for that. But anyways, back to this camera. The, um, the, the quality that that guy was after in that shoot this held up to, he was like, this is amazing footage. And that was a big stage setup. There was some lighting and everything like that. Some of the lighting was overexposed and I couldn't really help that too much because the singer was really bright and the rest of the band were a little bit darker. Um, but I worked my way around that in post and that was fine. But the, the G85 is an absolute powerhouse for um, hybrid shooters as well. Like, incredible. You can go from video to photo just like that. Um, you, you can make amazing videos out of them. You're shooting in whichever mode you want. They don't specify NTSC or PAL in the camera. They just have the frame rate settings there as you can just choose from. So you do have to know a little bit about, know a little bit about that, which I wasn't fully versed up on when I bought the camera. Um, I just thought, yep, 60 frames a second sounds good to me. Um, that's gonna give me some good slow-mo if I need to slow it down onto a 30 frame timeline. But when I was editing, I wasn't even editing on a 30 frame timeline. I was editing on a 60 frame timeline. Still slowing them down and it still looked fine. So, um, in saying that, these do 1080, 60 um, FPS, 4K, 30 FPS. They do 1080, 50 um, FPS, FPS um, 25, 24, uh, 630, um, basically the, the range that you need. Um, they do 120 in 720p, so I very highly doubt you're going to go down there. Um, but yeah, they've got a good range. So if you need to do some 4K stuff, they've got that in uh, 25 and 30. Um, so that works great for, for when you need to use those kind of things. The um, the other thing with this is the battery life is freaking amazing. Um, I'm running the, in this one, I've got the actual Lumix battery. This is a 1200 milliamp battery. And in one of these other ones, I'm pretty sure I've got other ones, different batteries. This one here, I've got a Wasabi battery, and it is 1,400 milliamps. Yes, if they are 1,400 over 1,200, they are going to last a little bit longer, so that is something to keep in mind. Um, Third-party branded batteries are still good. Um, just make sure you get something like a Wasabi or um, a reputable third-party brand, uh, because I have heard that some of the other ones can um, expand, blow up, um, not catch fire, but get really, really hot, um, and also not last as long as they say, like I might say 1500 milliamp and they might not even, they might be equivalent to a 900 milliamp. So I'm gonna keep in mind there, but they do work really great. It is a single SD um, slot in the camera. Um, what else is there on this? They've got uh, a remote uh, wire, a remote input, a microphone input jack, a HDMI and a USB out. Um, uh, output, in, input, output, whichever way you want to put it. Um, it doesn't have a headphone jack. That's one thing that I did miss on this. Um, when you wanted to record audio levels, I couldn't do that, so I had to run through something different like a Zoom H2 or something like that if I wanted to check the audio level or um, go through some Rode wireless mics or something like that. Rode wireless Go mics to be able to um, yeah, know how the audio was going to be. Um, but majority of the time I could see on the camera if it was going to be super loud and you just know if it's going to be loud or not um, from what you're recording. So I've used the uh, Rode Mini or Rode something, it's like a Go thing, I can't remember what it's called now, but it goes on there, a big fluffy dead cat thing on it, so that's sweet. Um, another thing on this is you've got your, your standard um, shot, your burst mode, your 4K photos, your macro photos, um, your time lapse and your timer settings on there. So I'll just put that up there a little bit. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. So that's all there. And then on this side of the dial, this side of the world here, you've got, this isn't wanting to focus, there we go. Um, you've got manual mode for video, which you can change to um, aperture priority, shutter priority, all that stuff. You've got custom one and two. You've got, uh, what's that one? Scene. Uh, which is kind of quirky little kind of thing that you'd expect in an older camera. Um, some artist thing, I've never used that. Um, AI, which is basically like automatic mode. 
um, pro, uh, priority mode, aperture priority, shutter priority, manual mode. So that's all great. One thing that I've noticed on this that I like over the A7S2 uh, is that you can just rotate that dial. This isn't wanting to focus, but you can just rotate that dial whenever you want, however you want, backwards, forwards, whatever which is great on the uh, Sony one, you have to press in a little button in the middle to be able to move that, which is a bit of a safety feature. I understand the reason behind that, but it, to me it's a bit of a pain in the bum when I'm doing hybrid stuff. I just want to be just getting it done. I don't want to be worrying about my finger on another button and all that stuff. So um, it's got a bunch of programmable function buttons. I've never programmed them, um, never had to. Um, they've got like different functions on there, like uh, quick menus, display, um, function one, which is in, when you're in certain modes, you can adjust the brightness, um, uh, level, a few other things on there, um, which which is good if you want to get into that programmable kind of outset. Um, and then it's got the record button for the video there, and then you've got, or you can just also use the um, whatever, shutter button, shoot button, there is a word for that I can't get into my head at the moment, um, to record, and that's what I've done, I've very rarely ever used that um, record button there. Um, there is another little button in the, uh, I think the back one is, uh, not ISO, um, shutter, I think, maybe, or aperture, um, they've got that at the back for the shutter and the aperture at the front, or the other way around, I can't remember off the top of my head, I'll just double check that now, I'll turn this one on. Uh, the back is your shutter and the front is your aperture. Um, the On the back as well, it's also got a dial for the autofocus mode, manual focus and AF, um, AFF and AFS mode. And then you've got AF and AE lock as well for a little button there. Um, I love that, how you can just flip this around and you go Auto mo auto focus mode to manual focus mode. I've used that so many times when I'm shooting bands. I just can't find that focus in that right, sorry, in that right distance. And I've just switched over manual focus. Boom, got the shot. Great. Go back to auto focus when I need to or whatever. And um, I've shot a lot of the band stuff in manual focus. I just prefer it. I can just get a little bit more creative with it. I can follow them a little bit better. Um, the auto focus in this camera is still fantastic though. Some people say it's a little bit slow. Yeah, compared to like the Sony A7S 3s which are like freaking rocket ships anyways, full frame rocket ships. This camera, I can't remember, like under $1,000? Like under $1,000 for this compared to a camera that's like three and a half grand. Of course there's going to be some differences, okay? So don't compare this to an A7S 3. And if you do, this is still a really good option. I bought three of these for the price less than a a7s3 i bought three of these and i still had change so this has been great for wedding stuff i bought three of them the reason i bought three of the same camera is because it was just great to be able to go i know that all the images are going to be the same the coloring is going to be the same all that stuff these do shoot in s log i think it is or v log those kind of things i can't remember straight off the top of my head um, I'm not going to go fully into detail with that stuff this is more just is it worth buying still in 2021 and the answer is yes um, you can shoot in those. I've ne never shot in RAW. Even for photos, you can do photos in RAW, all that stuff. I've never shot in it. I've just shot in standard mode. I made a little adjustments to it, I think, in some of the saturation settings or something like that. I went like back like minus one or something like that, um, just for a little bit of editing sake. Um, I can't even remember what it was now, so that's how important it was to me to be like that. Like, seriously, you give it to me and it was in standard and that's fine. The A7S Mark II, I've sh I'm shooting in standard mode on that. Fine, works for me. I'm not bloody changing things to be minus four, three, six, whatever it is. Because that's more stuff I've got to remember when I go to edit the bloody footage. So forget that. I just want it to be clean out the barrel. If I'm really, if someone comes up to me and says, I want this to be the best color graded multi billion dollar blockbuster movie, and I want you to use the A7S Mark II or the G85, I might go into raw mode or S log or V log or change the settings or whatever. Fair call. Cool. I'm shooting weddings where I just want it to be done, clear, what I see is good, and not even good, is great. It, the colour profile straight out of this camera in standard mode is, like, I'm going to say it's draw-dropping. 
it is literally, it, your jaw just goes boom to the floor. Because you don't need to be mucking around with any of that other stuff. Bit of an exposure touch up, maybe a little bit of color correction and away you go. And with some stuff you might whack a filter on it, some stuff you go black and white. Some edits you add, you add noise to it, like whatever. It's one thing I just don't want to get involved with. This works fine for what I need it to. So, um, yeah, that, that's basically it. You've got um, obviously your, your bin button and all those kind of things down there. Um, this still isn't focusing. Uh, ISO, white balance, um, focus, uh, another function button and your menu button in the middle. Uh, playback button and display buttons are just here. The screen. That's one thing that um, did annoy me at the beginning was the screen does fold out like this um, and then it obviously does rotate. If you go down, it's like a 90 degree kind of thing and if you go all the way, it does go 180. Um, so you can do like selfie style stuff. Um, if you have got a headphone, uh, not a headphone, a microphone in, it can get in the way, uh, but just be aware of that when you plug it in. I've had to be aware of it a few times. And same thing if you're running an external monitor, I use the Fieldworld F6 Plus. Um, and sometimes the HDMI cord gets in the way, but you just be aware of that stuff when you're doing it. Um, or if you're running it on a gimbal, um, yeah, just be aware that that's extra weight going that way. Um, I should probably put that like that. That's extra weight going that way. Um, but you can fold that around and have it like that. That's one thing that I do like about the Sony is that the Sony just goes, I'll show you right now. The Sony does just go out like that. It doesn't do anything foldy outy the other way to get in the way. Um, this doesn't go up like a vlog though. I did have the, I've still got it, the Canon G7X Mark II. That goes straight up. But if I'm doing a, a vlog system where I just want a little thing, I'm going on a holiday or whatever, and I just don't want a lot of baggage, I'll just take that camera out. That, that's another great camera. That's what I started with was the G7X Mark II, and then I went into the Lumix range because then you could change lenses and that kind of thing and be a little bit more manual. And even that was a great camera, the G7X Mark II. I've seen another, like a few other people that are using those little point and shoot cameras at some band stuff, and they're great. And I know you can get great results out of them because some of the, like even now, some of the best shots that I look back on were shot on that camera on the G7X Mark II. And then the next lot is in all in the Lumix. So um, I'll pop some of those photos up and stuff as, as I'm doing this video, and I'll just put like down at the bottom the little tag of what what they were shot on. I won't probably do the lenses because it's going to be hard for me to remember what they were. Um, but comment below if you guys want to know what lenses I'm using, what lenses I found are the best. Um, as I said earlier, the Sigma range was is just been absolutely freaking unreal. Like if there was some lenses I'd say invest some cash into into a micro four thirds, definitely get the Sigmas. The Sigma 1.4 range is just it blew my mind into a thousand billion pieces. When I went from the Olympus, I thought the when I went from a kit lens to the Olympus 12 to, to 60. Uh, 12 to 40, 12 to 60, whatever it was, um, 2.8, it was like, whoa, this lens is incredible, like the background blur, the bokeh, the like focus, the like, whoa, everything was like freaking amazing, and it still is. When I'm doing video work with that, it gives me the chance to be able to zoom still, all that stuff is great, um, and the background blur is still there, because the other thing you got to remember with Micro Four Thirds is that everything doubles, so it goes from... If it's on 1.4, it goes to 2.8. If it's a 30 mil, it's actually 60 mil, that kind of stuff. So when you are shooting, um, be aware of that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's that that lens was still fantastic and still is fantastic. But when I went into the primes to get a little bit better low light performance out of them, opening it right up to 1.4, which is actually 2.8, 2.8. <laughs> um, it... It blew my mind. It definitely did make a difference going from 2.8 to 1.4 because uh, obviously 2.8 is 4. Point, uh, sorry, 2.8 is 5.2. So it is definitely opening it up. That's a massive thing. If you want to get better light performance out of your cameras, the lenses is a good place to start. <laughs> it's basically the only place to go unless you want to be ramping it up to like 12,000 ISO, which on this camera definitely, definitely has some noise. Um, but in the Sony range, not so much, um, but you're obviously paying a little bit more for that. So um, I would definitely invest in this camera again if I was in the same shoes as I was before. This is a great starting point, um, and even going beyond the starter point, you can invest in the lenses and it can last you ages. And I'm still going to be shooting weddings and other projects with these. The main reason behind getting the Sony and the upgrade into the full frame was I just needed to get some really, really sharp um, low-light performance out of it. and 
the Lumix was very, very close to hanging on. Very close. Um, but it just wasn't quite there. So, uh, yeah, but it is like $1,000 cheaper as well. So, is the G85 Lumix cameras, are they worth it? 100%. Grab these in 2021. Grab three of them, grab four of them, grab some Sigma lenses, and you go out and shoot, have some great times, get some great photos, go into any aspect, any avenue you want. Models, sport, landscape, bands, what else is there? Weddings, engagements, birthdays, 21st, etc., 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 etc. They nail it. They seriously nail it. I'm getting hyped up about this because they have just been unreal cameras. And the day that I do, do go to sell them is going to be a very sad day if I do ever sell them um, and go into upgrading in the full full frame world. Um, but yes, I would highly recommend you get them in 2021 if you are thinking of doing them over this A6400. Definitely do it. The A6400 doesn't have IBIS. This does. And the in-body stabilization on this is freaking unreal. But you can literally be like this with the camera and it will come out like this crystal clear like it'll be like it's on a gimbal you don't a6400 your footage is going to look like this oh with my hand it's going to look like that it's going to look absolutely shocking so and yes i know this from experience it is crap so for that stuff you can run and gun with it vlog do the whole lot it's insane put it on a gimbal it's like just next level um yeah that's basically it guys i could rave on for ages comment below if you guys got any questions about them that you want answered um yeah, or if you've had any experiences with the G85 that you've loved or hated, I'd love to know. And um, let me know if you guys think about going into the full frame world as well, or if you're going from a micro full thirds camera APS-C sensor to another one, and the reason why I'm behind that stuff. Like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Always appreciate it on this channel. This vlog has gone for another 23, 24 minutes. So if you guys are still here at this point, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Um, wrap it up with yes it is definitely worth getting the G85 in 2021 and I'm going to leave it at that guys so um, yeah cheers see you in the next one